Hello everyone, this is Rose Sullivan, your professor for human behavior and the social environment, the, the first semester of it. This is a full year course. So in the fall of 2020, we do uh, this course. And then in the spring of 2020, well, or 2021, we will carry this over and do another semester. So this is a, a strange year in just so many ways. Um, so many ways. So one of the things, of course, that, that we all have to get used to is the idea that we're going to be um, synchronous and online, which means that we will be meeting together online at the same time that our class would be ordinarily. And all I can really hope for at this point, I suppose, is that we might get back to normal for next semester, but this semester, that's that's what we have. So our time that we all meet together will be on Mondays. Uh, some of you will meet at 9 o'clock, and some of you will meet by 11 o'clock. Um, in the course catalog for this year, I believe it has our classes going from 9 to 10.45 and 11 to 12.45. I believe there's an hour and 45 minutes set aside um, for our class. That was done because we believed that we would be in person. So I think an hour and 45 minutes would be an awfully long Zoom class. And so one of the changes that I made once we realized that we were doing this remote class was to say that we would meet from 9 to 10.15 on Mondays for the first group of people and from 11 to 12:15 for the second group of people and then there will be additional work online in the folder that people can do um, whenever they can as long as it's done by the deadline so we're going to shorten the zoom class uh, because I think that that that's more doable for people it's a an hour and 45 minutes would be really long so um, because this Monday was Labor Day we or this Monday right now is Labor Day we're not meeting in person so that's a little bit strange because it means that we will really we're almost starting before we actually see each other at least on zoom anyway for two weeks once school has started so I'm going to have some online work for you this week uh, and the first thing is to watch this video where we just go over the syllabus and we will um, go over the syllabus again once we're all together on zoom but I thought this would be a good thing to start with so you're looking at the syllabus right now, and um, one of the first things I'll point out is that right now, for various reasons, it is much better to email me than call me. So you see my email there on the, on the first page. Um, the second thing to point out would be office hours. So I think the, what makes the most sense is that if you would like to speak with me outside of class, which is great and totally fine, I always like seeing students, um, send me an email that you'd like to like to meet and I will send you a Zoom link. Um, I think there might be a way to do virtual office hours where I'm just sort of sitting there and available, but I, to be quite honest, I haven't figured out how to do that. So if that changes, I'll let you know, but it might be easier just to send me an email if you want to try to meet with each other. Um, the class times is there. I think I, I just kind of explained that. And again, the idea that we're going to meet together synchronously during class time via Zoom on Mondays, and then you'll have work to do for the rest of the week. Um, I'm not going to read you the whole syllabus because I know that you guys can all figure that out. But the course description, what is this course really about? So this is a course that everybody takes in their junior year who wants to be a social work major. It's one of those sort of major foundation courses of the major. And it's really about the biological slash medical, psychological and social stressors or uh, experiences that shape who we are. And because all of us come in to this class and, and to Westfield with enormously diverse backgrounds, all of us have been shaped somehow by the biopsychosocial influences of our life. And the fact that we, as social workers, give equal weight to the biological, psychological, and social aspects of someone's life is definitely um, different among professions like, say, psychology or counseling or substance abuse. Um, we try to ha take a very holistic view 
of what's going on with somebody and how they got to the point where they're at and how they're going to improve their lives in whatever way. So this course is going to approach all of the major theories of human behavior and human development. And we're going to do that very broadly in the fall, where we just talk about these theories in a broad way. And then we're going to do it much more specifically in the second semester, where we start paying attention to age groupings. So the biopsychosocial uh, significant events of, say, infancy, all the way through old age. But that's something that comes in the second half of the year. Um, so in this first half, we're just going to start to introduce these theories in general and think about how we might apply them. So that would be a kind of a summary of the course description. When you get to things like course objectives, one of the things you start to see in the syllabus is that there are a number of objectives and they all are followed by a number. So don't worry about the numbers. Um, social work as a discipline is uh, regulated by a social work education body and the numbers are really for that accreditation body so that if they pull our syllabi and want to check them they can see exactly how our learning objectives match the competencies that CSWE lays out. So you can certainly read the course objectives um, don't worry about the numbers but you'll get a sense of again what what the major objectives are about. So in the next section here, we start to see the actual competencies. And again, this is coming directly from the NASW Code of Ethics, and it's also com coming from the regulatory body called the Council for Social Work Education. You can certainly look through these. I, it probably at this point is not going to make a huge impact on you what these things are, except for that we will cover all of this topic in one way or another during this course. So you can see all of these competencies, all of your social work classes will cover some of these competencies from, from junior year and senior year. Once you are finished with the major, you will have had many classes that uh, cover all these competencies. So I'll just highlight this piece about academic honesty. This is obviously, obviously very important. I can say that in our program. We have a very writing intensive program and we also have quizzes and tests just like any other class. So it is obviously so important that your work is your own work. And so with this in mind, we ask people to read this section and if they have not uh, checked out the academic honesty policy of the university, that's important too. Um, I will say that when I have run into trouble with academic honesty with students, it is almost always a mistake that they made, not a deliberate uh, misrepresentation of their work. So that is why the uh, library website is highlighted there, owl.english.purdue.edu. If you're writing a paper and you know that you need to cite something and you're not sure how to cite it, that website right there will help you enormously. Um, so that you can be sure that you have honestly represented the work of others as you write your papers. And that is also a really important skill if, if you're thinking about graduate school in the future, but it's also an important skill in this class. And another resource if you're struggling with how to write the paper in a way that cites things correctly, for example, is again to point out the really great resource of the Reading and Writing Center. Um, these are great folks. And if you let them know that you're struggling with that, in addition to helping you with all kinds of things, they'll help you with that too. So just check out those websites and uh, maybe even look over the policy in the Westfield State uh, policy book, which is the link to it is right there. So we'll get to this in a minute, but you're going to have one major paper in this class. And this is this section here is the guidelines for that written work. You might not need to, well, you will need to follow APA guidelines for the final paper, um, but you won't necessarily have a huge amount of citations to write. So there will be an online Dropbox that things uh, will be put into for this class. If something's going on and you need an extension, make sure you please talk to me before the due date. 
Uh, I generally am pretty flexible with extensions as long as we have a, a clear plan about when something will be submitted. Again, I'm going to remind you about the Reading and Writing, the Reading and Writing Center. They're really helpful. Um, for our final paper, you're going to be looking at additional resources, and so in order to have the most up-to-date, accurate information on any research project, the general guideline is that whatever you're choosing to talk about would be no more than five years old and be from a reliable source. And so you can see on this very last bullet point, there are some examples of that. So with a fully remote class, we are going to have a different kind of communicating. Um, of course, we'll be on Zoom and, and having a live experience, but a lot of our work will also be online. And so this section talks about making sure that we have a level of professionalism that we would have in person, that we would have synchronously online, and that we would have in any writing that we have in the course. Um, in the first week folder, uh, you'll see some of, some examples of that. We're getting into now on the syllabus the discussion about non-discrimination policies. Westfield State uh, follows all of the ADA requirements of the federal government and for students who have some kind of an accommodation for a learning difference, they should register with the Panacos Center and then work with the Panacos Center uh, to find out what, what kinds of accommodations they might need. Um, it's also important to know in terms of non-discrimination that the roster I get with everybody's name on it is kind of your official legal name. But if you have a nickname or if you would like to be known by a different gender pronoun than what is on your official documentation, it's fine to let me know that and I'll make those changes as I, as I go through the class. And Social work as a discipline is a is a social justice oriented profession and so therefore I'll read you this final statement that we in our classes will practice without discrimination and respect for the knowledge and skills related to age, class, color, culture, disability, ethnicity, family structure, gender, marital status, national origin, race, religion, sex, and sexual orientation. So we're going to follow those same civil rights related uh, policies here in our class as well. So you have probably never taken a class during a pandemic. I have certainly never taught a class during a pandemic. Uh, but that being said, we really, really prioritize attendance, both in the online world and uh, in our synchronous class. So if you're going to miss one of the Zoom classes, let me know. Um, if you fall behind on your online work, let me know and let's figure that out. A word of caution here, um, it can be very easy to quickly fall behind and especially if many of you are in the position right now where you're taking several online courses. Um, please do your best to try to keep up because it's amazing how quickly you can get avalanched by work and start to fall behind and um, it can be hard to catch up when you've fallen behind so we really don't want you to go through that so let's work together to keep you on track um, so that we don't have to try to dig you out of a hole later on so with that said we'll have class every Monday unless it's a holiday and um, the expectation will be that you will have read the things on the material by that class time and we'll have a mixture of discussion and online activity based things uh, per class and and it's really you know helpful that you're active in that so here is the required text it's the Hutchinson textbook the most recent version of the Hutchinson text is from 2017 so my advice to you about the textbook is that you should be able to find used copies of this textbook throughout the internet. It is one of the most common books for this class and I have a feeling that there's lots and lots of these books in circulation. You might be able to certainly find a book from the previous edition which I think is 2012. Um, I would stick to either the 2012 text or this text because I think anything else is going to get um, 
pretty different. If you get a used book, or any book, that is not exactly this 2017 book, it's probably fine, but there might be differences in the page numbers. So just bear that in mind. If we're reading about the, bio, the biological section of the assessment, and I give you page numbers, if you have the 2012 book, the page numbers might be different but you want to make sure that you're reading about the same topic area that is on the syllabus. Um, if you can avoid buying a new copy of the book or buying a copy from the bookstore at Westfield, I would try to avoid that. You, can, you should really be able to get a much cheaper version online someplace. And if you rent the book, which I know there can be online rental options, when they ask you how long you want to rent it for, tell them for the entire year because we will use this exact same book in the next semester. So if you only rent it for one semester, you're going to have to end up renting it again in the second semester, which I think is more costly than if you just identify that you want to rent it for the year. So that's just my little statement about the book. Um, here you see the explanation of how grades are identified. And then this part of the syllabus is, I think, what people are obviously most interested in. So every week, once we really get going, there is going to be a short quiz in the folder for you to complete. So the quiz is going to be based on the text, any content from that week's folder, and any major points that might have come up in class discussion. So. There's a quiz every week, and when you add them all together and, and average them out, that will account to 40% of your grade. So you can see that that's a really significant portion of your grade. The second major assignment, which comprises 40% of your grade, is the book assignment, which we'll talk about in a minute. So when we have our synchronous class participation, I'll be taking attendance, and that average will comprise 10% of your grade. And then you will be asked to participate in asynchronous online class activities, which will be graded, and those activities averaged together will make the second and last 10% of your grade. So you really have four things that are uh, making up your final grade. So now the book project. The first thing you see here are four choices to pick from. The first book is a book called Picking Cotton, Our Memoir of Injustice and Redemption by Jennifer Thompson Canino and Ronald Cotton and Ellen Aaron, excuse me, Tornio. All of these books are true stories, they're memoirs. This is a really interesting book about a man named Ronald Cotton who was picked out of a lineup by Jennifer Thompson at that point for uh, a home invasion and rape. And with the strength of her eyewitness testi testimony, he was convicted. Um, he was actually convicted twice. He had, he had uh, multiple convictions based on her eyewitness testimony. And as it turns out, when science evolved and DNA could be factored into evidence, he was exonerated as uh, an innocent person, although he had been in prison for a number of years at that point. And so this book is about eyewitness testimony and the process of, of making that testimony. And that part of the book is written by Jennifer Thompson Canino. And the second half of the book is Ronald Cotton talking about his time in prison and what he went through constantly protesting his innocence and trying to, um, trying to get out of prison. So it's a very powerful book. There are parts of the book that are very disturbing. So I just say that as um, something to think about when you're picking these books. Uh, the second option to choose from is called When They Call You a Terrorist, a Black Lives Matter Memoir by Patrice Kahn Cullors and Asha Bendeli. So Patrice Kahn Cullors is one of the kind of co-founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. 
And this memoir is about her childhood, her family, the things that happened in her life that made her um, into an activist and specifically made her uh, participate in the founding of the Black Lives Matter movement. And so that is also a very powerful and at times difficult to read book. Uh, similar to Picking Cotton is a book called Just Mercy, A Story of Justice and Redemption by Brian Stevenson. And it's in some ways a similar story from the first book. It is about a man who was uh, convicted of murder and put on death row when in fact he was innocent. Um, and the last book to choose from is Memorial Drive, A Daughter's Memoir by Natasha Trethaway. And this is a relatively new book, and it's been very well received. And it's about um, it's about a biracial girl growing up in Mississippi uh, during a time when any kind of uh, transracial marriage or relationship was extremely, you know, scandalous. And it follows Natasha's life through to young adulthood, uh, and and deals at that point with the murder of her mother by uh, her then stepfather. So it's a book about the intersection of race and domestic violence and uh, the justice system. And it's again, a very powerful and at times difficult to read book. So the first thing that you're gonna do is pick one of these books and start to read it. So that then you get into the actual writing assignment itself. So the first thing you're going to do is create a reading schedule for yourself. And really all that is, is just you telling me what book you picked and how much of it you're going to read at a time with an end date, the date by which you believe you're going to be finished with the book. And then once you've, and then you're going to pass that into me by the 21st of September. And then once you have picked your book and read it, you can start working on the paper itself. And you'll see all of the prompting questions here. There is part one with all of those questions, part two, and part three. Part four is an external research section, which is where you look at the themes and the issues that are being raised in the book and do some independent research on that. Um, Obviously, this is a big assignment, and we will talk much more about it during the course of the next few weeks. Um, and then last, of course, is the summary and conclusion. And when you finish this, what you've essentially done is written a multi-dimensional assessment. You've written a biopsychosocial assessment of a character in your book. So it's, uh, I believe we identified it as 15 to 20 pages. So it's, it's, uh, it's a big paper but there's so much to be done that you might actually find it easy to write this paper. And then the last thing that I won't scroll through is, you know, week to week, what you're doing, things that you're reading, topics that we're going to cover. Um, and so I won't obviously go down and read all of those things. I'll let you do that. So that I think concludes this little discussion about the syllabus. Um, as you know, we'll talk more about that. This won't be the only time we cover it, but I wanted you to at least start looking at it and uh, thinking about it um, and maybe thinking about some of those books that you might want to um, pick for this large uh, book assignment. So that is where I'm going to leave it for now. And um, on September 15th, which I believe is a Monday, I believe that's our first actual synchronous class. You can expect to hear from me about Zoom links uh, in the next day or two. And I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to actually see you on Zoom and start to get to know you as a class. And I think we're going to have a good time as, as much as we can. Okay, folks, I'll see you on the 15th.